Statistics and Excel Bell Curve Test Score Example Part Number Two. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet. However, we started in a prior presentation, so you could go back there and start from the blank worksheet. But if you do have access to this workbook, there's three tabs down below. Example, practice, blank, example, in essence, answer key, the practice tab, having preformatted cells so you could get to the heart of the practice problem. The blank tab where we started from a blank worksheet and are continuing on it at this point in time. Let's give a quick recap of what we did in the past. We're thinking about the bell curve or normal distribution using an example quite common to both instructors as well as students, that being the test scores. We first generated our test scores using a random generator tool, which is a great tool to understand under the data tab up top and the analysis group. If you don't have the analysis group, we showed you how to turn that on. Once we got our data, we are imagining these are a thousand data points that we got in actual practice uh, in our test scores. And then we did our calculations on that actual data, picking up the mean, the standard deviation, the median, noting that the median was close to the mean. So that could be an indication that a bell curve would be an approximate representation of this data. In order to plot this information in an actual smooth bell curve, we then said we want to go four standard deviations lower and higher to pick up basically all of the data, even though this, the bell curve in theory goes on forever. And so four standard deviations, here's the lower limit and the upper limit. This X representing our test scores, this giving our every avail or possible test scores, this being the, the probability of those test scores, which is our norm.dist, our major function that we've been using. We then compared that to our actual data using the frequency distribution to see how many times our actual data fell in the range of say 34 to 35 or 35 to 36. And then we did a percent of the total of the actual data because this then approximates the, the bell curve. So now we can compare the data that we got from our norm.dist to our actual data and look at the difference between the two. Now we plotted this information over here. This is the actual data plotted in the format of a histogram. We did the bell curve in terms of a line charts that gives us the nice curve, but it's not an area graph. And then we did the area graph of the, of, uh, the bell curve as well. So now we're going to get a little bit more fancy with our graphs and ask a couple questions with this data. So let's go back on over here. And I, I can say now, now that I have both the P of X in the format of percentages and the total here in the format of percentages, I'm going to go back on over to this graph, which was my line chart and say, is, could I plot those both on the same graph over the top of each other to see how closely the the perfect bell graph fits over our percentages of the total i believe we can so i'm going to pull this graph back out i'm going to select it i'm going to go into the chart design up top and say let's add another column to it selecting the data and i'm going to say we want to add another column if we uh, uh if we may and this is going to be the percent of total data set and then here you got to be careful with this second one delete what's in there 
and then select your data. We want this data right here, control shift down. And then I'm not gonna hit control up cause it's finicky. So I'm just gonna say, do that and then okay. And hopefully it picked it up. So I'm gonna say, okay. And then I'll scroll up this way. And so there's the actual, now if I hit the plus button, I might need a legend now. And so I don't need a, le I'm already a legend and I'm already here. Okay, I'm not talking about you as a legend. I need a let to t the key, the ledge to tell me the two. Oh, okay. I thought you were trying to say I'm not a legend in my own in accounting, but any case. So here we've got the actual curve versus the 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 uh, uh, the data that are actual data. So you can see they kind of approximate each other. So that's another indication which is useful to say, okay, how closely might this approximate with a vic pictorial representation? All right, so, so the next, we're gonna get also more fancy now with the smooth bell curve. So once we, once we think the bell curve has some predictive power, we can get a little bit more fancy with the actual area curve that we created in a prior presentation. I'm gonna move the rest of these curves over here. These are taking second fiddle seat. They're not as important at this point in time. Put them backstage so that, so that the show can go on on the front uh, stage. So then another, so one of the questions we might ask, let's go over here and do it this way. We're gonna say, okay, uh, if, if we have this data, one of the questions we might ask is, well, what if X was equal to, X is the test scores, you'll remember. Uh, and what's the likelihood that I get a test score of 80? Now I can look over here and say, well, I graphed this whole thing out and, and I can say, okay, well down here, I can, I can go to my 80 and say, there it is. So 3%, if I double click on it, that's the good old norm.dist of the 80. And they gave me the 3.48. Notice that I represented the 80 again as a whole number. So that, and this is represented basically as a uh, percent. So I'm not representing the 80 as an 80% here and so on. So you gotta be a little bit careful on that, but so there we have it. But usually you're not asking that question. You're probably gonna ask, what's the likelihood that I get an 80% or above or an 80% or below? Those are kind of the questions that uh, you might ask. And because it's an area under the curve, we might not be able to just kind of sum this whole thing up. You might say, well, last time when we did like the Poisson and stuff, we were able to sum this up. That might give you an approximation about 70.99 but possibly not uh, the exact number. So we can then do our, our questions over here to answer those type of, of questions. So let's say we're gonna say, I'll type in the operator because I'm also gonna put some fancy formulas in here, operator, and this is gonna be the orange, which will make sense when I get to the graph and say that this is gonna be less than or equal to. So if I'm using less than or equal to, I'm gonna say this is, and I'll make this orange. This will make sense when I make the graph, home tab, font group, drop down. I'm gonna make this orange. And then I'm gonna say, okay, so, so now my question is P, I can represent it this way, is equal to X is less than or equal to, uh, equal to 80. So P of X is less than or equal to 80, let's say. So now if I wanna change these titles, it could be useful to do that. It gets a little confusing, but once you do it a few times, you can make this title dynamic. Changing the 80, for example, to tie into this 80. So to do that, I'm gonna double click on it. I'm gonna to go to the front of it, hit equals to make it a formula. I need to put quotes around anything that is text. So I'm gonna put a quote, and then I was gonna put uh, this cell to put the operator in, but I'm just gonna leave all of this all the way past the equal as just text. So I'll keep that as just text. And then that 80, I wanna, play, I wanna replace it with this cell. That's the dy dynamic part. To do that though, I need to tie it together with an and. So the and is not an and function, it's just tying together the text. I'm gonna select that 80 and then and replace it with this, which is G10. And then I need another and to tie it to the next text, which is just that closing of the brackets, quote here and a quote after the brackets. Now that's tedious to do, but once you do it, it's pretty neat because now you can create these titles that are dynamic. 
So now I can do this my same norm.dist, but make it cumulative to get to get this calculation. So this is going to be, and we'll see this on the graph as well, because the graph is quite useful, but it's a little bit tricky to understand how to set up a graph in Excel so it so it does this automatically, which is great to do for those of us that aren't good with handwritten graphs, right? So and so if, if you can figure this out in Excel for us non-artistic people that can't barely draw a straight line, this is a good uh, good tool uh, to pick up. So we're going to say this is going to be equal to norm.dist tab. The X is now going to be this 80. The mean, comma, same thing we did before is that mean 74.92, comma. The standard deviation is now going to be this 10.09. And then comma, now it needs to be cumulative, which is going to take the area under the graph, right under the line, up to 80. And so now we want it to be one or true. True, you can type in true. One is easier to type. So I'll put a one. And then I'm going to percentify that. Home tab, number groom, percentify. Add some decimals. Comes out to the 69.26. Uh, and uh, you'll recall that that's different than if I went down to this 80 down here and I'm saying there's the 80 there's the likelihood that I get uh, 80 here's 80 80 exactly and then if I was to add all this up this would be 70.99 which is close to the 69.26 but not exact due to the the nature that we have a, a, a curve uh, kind of situation here so remember this 80 represents the score which would be in percents, you know, you would think of an 80% that we get an 80 on it, which we're representing as a whole number. This 69.26 uh, is the likelihood that we get an 80. Now you might be thinking, shouldn't the likelihood that I get an 80% be like 80% because that's kind of the point, but, but no, you know, we're, do we're doing it based on the actual, <laughs> you know, the actual results, which are actually hovering around 74.92 uh, at the mean with a standard deviation of 10, around 10, right? So that so once you have that, you, you can also get into the, the Z. Now the Z is a representation of uh, the number that's in relation to the midpoint, the, sta the, the, the mean, right? So we're trying to represent the number in terms of standard deviations. So in other words, if I have an 80 here, the question is how can I represent that as a Z score? So I could do that by saying this is going to be equal to brackets because I got to subtract and then I'm going to do a division. So it's going to be the 80 minus the midpoint. So notice we're talking about difference from that middle point, closing up the brackets divided by the standard deviation, right? So we're taking the score that we're looking for minus the middle point divided by the spread number, the standard deviation. So I'm going to say enter and we get a Z if I go home tab number of uh, 0.5 so so now we're representing this in z scores and now if i do this same i could do a similar calculation that we had before but instead of having x now we've got uh the z so we can use a formula such as this this equals norm dot uh norm dot s dot dist so it's a slight difference here right and now i need the z instead of the x because now i have the z and not the X, and then I just need to say whether it be cumulative. Notice I don't need the mean and the standard deviation. Why? Because they're already in the Z-score, because we calculated the Z-score with the X and the mean and the standard deviation. So all we need to do is say, is it cumulative or not? And I'm going to say it is cumulative with a 1, and we should get to the same number, home tab, number group, percent, adding some decimals of that 69.26. Now, how can we graph this on the graph? If I look at the graph, I'd like to say, okay, I'd like to see something populate this area over here. And so it shows me pictorially at that 80, you know, at the 80, uh, 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 so it shows up over here. So I could say, okay, to do that, I can also add the Z. Let's first add the Z in our list of data. I'm gonna say this is my Z column, home tab, font group, numbered or bucket black, white center and then I'm going to calculate the Z for everything here so I'm going to say okay the Z you'll recall equals brackets I'm not going to do a spill array function I'm just going to do the good old normal format this X minus the mean 
F4, so it's an absolute dollar sign before the G and the two, closing up the brackets, divided by the standard deviation. This is outside of my, my what I'm currently working in, so I'm gonna F4 it, because I don't want it to move down dollar sign before the G and the three, enter. There's my Z score. Let's add some decimals, home tab, number group, couple decimals, and double click to drop it down. So this is the Z score that's representing below the mean, right? And when it gets to zero, that means that means it's going to be around that 74%, right? So because that means we're at that middle point for the Z score. And then this is representing in terms of, in essence, standard deviations above the uh, standard, above that uh, mean point, right? All right, so there's our Z. And then if I'm trying to graph this, then I can say, okay, what if I try to put another graph on top here that represents my data uh, up to this point, less than or equal to up to that 80? So I could say, all right, let me see if I can get a graph that's gonna, that's gonna be equal to, in essence, this argument. And so now it's dynamic in that I can change that 80 again, and I can go to the home tab, font group, percent and uh, white, and let's center it as well. Okay, so now I can say, all right, uh, let's see if we can use like an if function to, to pick up our data here. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I want you to put something here uh, if, this number is uh, less than or equal to 80. And if not, I don't want you to put anything here. So it'll just be blank. And then I can graph that on top of this graph and it will give me, it'll give me that, that another line, which will, which will be nice visual. So I'm gonna say equals if, this is our if logical test. I'm just gonna say, all right, I want you to say if this number is less than or equal to uh, less than or equal to this number, then that's a comma. So now we're going to the next argument. What do you want to do if it's true? If it's true, then I want you to pick up the uh, P of X number. But if it's not, which is a comma, I want you to just put a blank. I want you to leave it blank, which is just double quotes because it's, it's nothing in it. So that's our text field with nothing in the middle. So that's our argument. So I'm gonna say, okay. And uh, it comes out to zero here because it's less than this, it's a percent. Let's percentify the cell, home tab, number, percentify, add a couple decimals. And then I'm gonna double click the fill handle and copy and it copies it down. Now, hold on, I can see something went horribly, horribly wrong here. Let's double click on it. What went wrong? Notice that this cell, is it got copied down, see? So, so I'm gonna absolute reference that one. I'm gonna go into that one. I'm gonna say, okay, that's G10 right there. F4, dollar sign before the G and the 10. That sticks this one solid. So when I then double click on the fill handle again, then it copies it down. So now if I go down, it'll copy it down to here and then everything over 80, there's nothing in it. So now what I can do is I can say, okay, now I'm going to go to my graph and I'm going to pick up this column and that will give me that uh, a, a different color that will give me that, that distinction. So let's go to the charts up top and then I'm going to go to the data and I'm going to say, let's select the data and say, I'm going to add another data set and I'm going to call the name of it this right here. So I'm just going to say that's the name. And then remember, be careful with this bottom part, delete it, make sure you're picking up the right data, control shift down, and it picks up all this data, even though there's blank cells down here. Okay, I'll break it all the way to the bottom because of course they won't be blank if you, it's a dynamic thing if you change it. Okay, and then we're gonna say, okay, and then boom. So now you've got, now you've got your graph that gives you around the 80 and you can see this, the, the blue line, which, which is nice to see pictorially. So we're going from uh, orange, we want less than 80. So the orange is what we're looking at, everything less than uh, or equal to 80. And then of course you might want a legend now. The legend, I don't need a legend cause I am, I am the legend. Okay, okay, calm down, calm down. 
So in any case, so we have that. Now, that's the now now this gets a little bit tricky because you also might be asking questions like, well, what if it's what if it's greater than or equal to? Well, that's kind of the inverse. So this graph kind of shows the inverse as well. So you can kind of use the same graph or you can put up different graphs to give you this middle point. And we can also get more fancy with this graph, adding the Z to it, give it giving us uh, uh, the standard deviations down below, which is pretty neat as well. So we'll dive into that in more depth, continuing to work on this in future presentations.